wish you a very, very warm welcome and a very good evening. On behalf of Juventus Odinia, uh, it gives uh, me immense pleasure. I'm Allah Mahajani, Vice President Marketing. And with me is Mr. Jatinder Jindal, the brand manager for uh, Pole Vault, Colmo Coxon. It gives us immense pleasure to welcome each one of you, uh, you know, uh, for a roundtable uh, meet or we can say a webinar on discussion of emerging options in management of uh, chronic pain. Uh, Juventus Odinia happens to be a pain management division uh, of uh, uh, Juventus Healthcare. And uh, we feel very happy and proud to share with you that there have been multiple uh, concepts in pain management, uh, which we have been uh, bringing to the market for the first time, right from Tolperazone, which was for the first time in the country, followed by Patches, uh, followed by S. Itodolac, which was the second brand in the market. Uh, followed by, uh, uh, you know, the management of uh, chronic osteoarthritis and pain, which was tendoform, right? So we, we as a company, believe uh, that for providing relief to the patients, newer pain option management should be brought to the marketplace. And one such uh, introduction, uh, which we have done very recently, or on the verge of uh, being launched, is uh, polymacoxid. Uh, Today, we have immense pleasure to have our medical director, Dr. Bhupesh Divan from Juventus, who has 28 years of experience with top pharmaceutical companies and who has conducted more than 100 clinical trials and published uh, multiple research papers and na in national peer-reviewed journals, who is with us, who is going to moderate this discussion. And we have esteemed faculty members, uh, Dr. Ram Chadha, uh, Dr. Ananda Kishore Pal, and uh, Dr. Mangesh Tivaskar with us. Right. Uh, I would hand over this session uh, to Dr. Bhupesh Divan so that he can introduce the panel and take the discussion ahead. Thank you, Dr. Divan. Divan. Uh, thank you, Allah. Thank you very much. And uh, a very good evening to all the participants in this uh, webinar. Um, so I would like to introduce our esteemed uh, panel over here. Uh, first of all, I'll start with Dr. Ram Chadha. Uh, Dr. Ram Chatta is a consultant, orthopedician, and spine surgeon uh, at Leelavati Bandra, uh, Jaslok Hospital, Padar Road, and uh, Global Hospital, Paril. He's having 34 years of rich experience in field of spine surgery, uh, presently DNB, orthopedician, uh, orthopedics guide, and teacher at the Leelavati Hospital and research, uh, research center at Bandra. Uh, he is president-elect for the Indian Orthopedic Association, and uh, uh, he's got uh, uh, pioneer of uh, uh, MICOS, Minimally Invasive Cosmetic Spine Surgery in India. Um, Dr. Chadda uh, is a regular keynote speaker and a guest orator at scientific conventions. Uh, Federation of, uh, he's a part of Federation of Delegates for India at the Asia-Pacific Orthopedician Association on editorial board of Asian Spine Journal, the Indian Spine Journal, and Malaysian Orthopedic Journal. And recently, he's pioneered robotic spine surgery, which is a innovation at Navi Mumbai. Uh, so we welcome Dr. Ram Chadda. Uh, next panelist is Dr. Prof uh, Professor Ananda Kisor Pal. Uh, he is a consultant orthopedician surgeon from. Um, Jalpaiguri Medical College. He's professor and head there. He's been the vice president of West Bengal Orthopedic Association, former head uh, department of orthopedics and traumatology at IPGMER SSKM Medical College, the center of excellence in Kolkata. Uh, national CME lecturer for AO basic advanced and master's course, examiner of diplomat and national board of uh, orthopedics MS, immediate past editor of Journal of West Bengal Orthopedic Association, reviewers of uh, Indian Journal of Orthopedics, 43 international and national publications in index journal. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Paul is well accomplished. So um, he's got gold medal for the best presentation in pediatric uh, session, um, is award for Indian Journal of Orthopedic and uh, AA Mehta gold medal in national conference of IOA. Welcome, Dr. Professor Ananda Kisopal. Uh, and now our uh, uh, another gold medalist, Dr. Dr. Mangesh Tivaskar. Uh, 
very well learned uh, doctor. He is uh, MD, FRCP, FACP, FICP, FGSI, Diploma in Advanced Diabetology from Denmark. He is consultant physician and diabetologist at Shilpa Medical Center, Mumbai. Dr. Ram Chanda ka friend hai ke bol that is adequate introduction for me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Dr. Sir, people should know who Dr. Ram okay. is. That's all right, doesn't matter. Great. So, um, the, um, so with this, uh, he's, by the way, uh, editor-in-chief of JAPI. So, with this, I welcome Dr. Mangesh Tivaskar to this panel. And uh, with this, we, we start the show. And to begin with, uh, with your permission, uh, Dr. Bangeshkar, uh, Dr. Tivaskar, uh, should we start the uh, small presentation? Yeah, yeah, that is good enough. So, let okay. us... Let us uh... You know, set the ball rolling. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Uh, Jatinder, can you just uh, share the video? Video, sir. Abhi apne start kiya. Okay, all right. I'll I'll try to share it. Yeah? Just hold on. Just a moment. I think there is something. Please let me know if the sound is there. Homococcid is an emerging solution for the management of inflammation and pain. A unique non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug with a better safety profile and dual mode of action, Polvolt 2 mg blocks both carbonic anhydrase and cyclooxygenase 2 enzymes. Currently available, first-generation NSAIDs like naproxen, diclofenac, ibuprofen etc. are non-selective and inhibit both cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 enzymes, leading to gastrointestinal and cardiovascular side effects. Therefore, to overcome these adverse effects due to cyclooxygenase 1 dependent mechanisms, several new selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors have been developed. Introducing Polvolt, Polmacoxib, and Next Generation NSAID with Tissue Selective Cyclooxygenase 2 Inhibitor. A first-in-class NSAID, which is a dual inhibitor of cyclooxygenase 2 and carbonic anhydrase enzymes. Tissue-specific, once-a-day orally active drug with half-life of 5 days. Carbonic anhydrase concentration is very low in the inflamed joints and tissues whereas cyclooxygenase 2 concentration rises in the inflamed tissues. The greater the distribution of carbonic anhydrase in the tissue, the lesser the inhibitory action of cyclooxygenase 2. Wherever cyclooxygenase 2 and carbonic anhydrase coexist, high affinity and preferential binding of polmacoxib to carbonic anhydrase takes place thus reducing the cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitory activity of polmacoxib. Cardiovascular side effects are reduced since cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme is spared in cardiac tissue. Importantly, low-dose administration of polmacoxib, only 2 mg has shown to have a negligible inhibitory effect on the required carbonic anhydrase enzyme function in the circulatory, gastrointestinal and renal system. There are many advantages of polmacoxib over other cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors like celecoxib. Polmacoxib is a first, tissue-specific and selective, once-a-day osteoarthritis drug with half-life of five days. It has unique mode of action, it is a dual inhibitor of cyclooxygenase 2 and carbonic anhydrase 1 and 2 enzymes. Due to this unique mechanism, polmacoxib specifically targets affected or inflamed joints only, and healthy tissue is spared of the side effects. Quick onset of relief from the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis in comparison to celecoxib. It is highest potency among the available NSAIDs. Only at a 2 mg per day dose, the lowest dose amongst all known NSAIDs. Convenient once-a-day regimen provides better compliance in patients, unlike most other NSAIDs, due to long half-life of polmacoxib which is approximately 5 days. Long-term safety established in long-duration studies extending up to 6 months of continuous usage. Polmacoxib with once-a-day administration shows enhanced gastrointestinal and cardiovascular safety. The half-life of a single dose of polmacoxib is approximately 5 days. Polmacoxib is excreted both via feces and urine. Indications and dosage administration. It is approved for the treatment of osteoarthritis of hip and knee joints. Recommended adults dose is 2 mg once daily. Maximum dose should not exceed 2 mg per day, since the drug is slowly accumulated in plasma and reaches steady-state concentration in a few days. 
clinical evidence of palmacoxib in human clinical studies. In this phase 1 clinical trial, palmacoxib was well tolerated. There were no clinically significant changes in blood pressure between the treatment groups. Palmacoxib suppressed serum thromboxane B2 and prostaglandin E2 at all three doses. A clinical study evaluated the influence of ketoconazole, a known strong inhibitor of CYP3A. The area under the curve increases for palmacoxib, but doesn't change the safety profile of palmacoxib. Palmacoxib showed quicker onset of relief from osteoarthritis as compared to celecoxib. Palmacoxib showed statistically significant superiority over placebo at week 3, but celecoxib did not show statistically significant difference from placebo at week 3. Womack physical function scores at week 3 Palmacoxib demonstrated better efficacy against celecoxib in all other efficacy endpoints including Womack pain and stiffness subscales at week 3 and week 6. Palmacoxib showed superior efficacy over celecoxib with statistical significance in physicians' global assessment score. 77.7% .7 of patients taking palmacoxib experienced improvement in signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis as compared to 58.9% in celecoxib group. Safety conclusions from 24 weeks palmacoxib extension study showed that it was well tolerated and adverse events were generally mild. We hope this scientific data and information will help you in confidently prescribing Polvolt 2 mg from Zaventus Healthcare Limited. Well, uh, this was a short video, and uh, I hope you must have got some insight of uh, pole vault with this. Um, now, uh, let's start the ball rolling, and uh, uh, I would like to ask uh, our panelists uh, to comment uh, on the uh, various questions which are commonly asked by the uh, you know, orthopedicians and uh, other fraternities. So, uh, first of all, I would like to ask a question to Dr. Ram Chadda. Uh, so, Dr. Chadda, it's all yours now. Uh, the question would be like, uh, do we really need new NSAIDs? I mean, there are so many available. And what are the shortcomings or limitations of the currently available NSAIDs? Basically, we as orthopedic surgeons have... Uh... NSAIDs as a part of our regular prescription in the office that we practice. And a lot of us also use them uh, over uh, a period of time post-operatively. As I look at it, uh, as the population is aging and as you're having a lot of chronic ailments coming in and uh, orthopedics is one subspeciality where people are looking at quality of life, pain being the biggest offender, a lot of people are desirous of having safe pain medication, which is anti-inflammatory in action. Over the years, uh, we've used similar drugs, but those which had potent side effects. We had people challenging their cardiovascular system, their GI system, their kidneys, and we had huge issues as far as side effects of this very group of drugs. Uh, which came in maybe about a decade and a half back. So today, if we are going to have a good NSAID, which gives safety in renal function, safety in cardiovascular function, safety as far as uh, GI disturbances is concerned, is also useful for chronic use because a lot of our patients need it for a prolonged period of time. And something which I noticed and I really appreciate adherence to treatment where you have a an OD dose or a single dose per day. So Correct. I am extremely impressed by these particular additions to our armamentarium with polmacoxib. So I am actually getting drawn to this and I would appreciate if my physician colleague, Dr. Tevaskar, actually enlightens both Dr. Pal and me more about this molecule and gives us some insight how we should use it safely and it should be our go-to molecule. Definitely, definitely that's true. We'll invite Dr. Tivaskar very soon. Uh, now, uh, another orthopedician of fame, uh, Dr. A.K. Paul. Uh, so, sir, I would like to ask you a, a very simple question uh, that polvocoxib uh, now is promoted as a first-in-class NSAID drug. So, uh, 
we would like to know from you like how is it uh, perceptibly uh, different from other coccyps which had been uh, available earlier absolutely actually basically um, the osteoarthrosis uh, basically in osteoarthrosis basically it's a degenerative condition but once it is it has come to us the patient with osteoarthrosis when there is the set inflammation sets in so we are looking for the better anti inflammatory analgesics so there are several analgesics already in the market which are, but uh, problem is as the osteoarthrosis is a chronic disease we require a is a, is a long acting like a very uh, anal and uh, supported anti inflammatory analgesic which will uh, produce a significant pain relief for a long period with safety. Now, polmacoxib is, is a wonder drug because so it, it is basically it is a dual mode of action. Basically, the previous what we are using as an anti-inflammatory were COX-2 selective inhibitor. But the same thing, say the COX-2 selective the, the inhibition that leads to sim similar side effects when this inhibition occurs in specific organs, which is undesirable, like in the heart, lung, kidney, and also the uh, the other GI system, but uh, the problem, the, the good effect of this polmacoxib, uh, is a full fold is it basically it acts as a dual action. It not only blocks the cox two, but it also it blocks the carbonic anhydrase, which is abundant in our system, and it is a high some in some situation some organs like in the heart, lung, renal, and the GI system, where the, the abundance of carbonic anhydrase, so it blocks the carbonic anhydrase there. Whereas in the in the in, in the uh, osteoarthrosis in the knee joint where there is a high inflammation where there is there is a as the coccyps uh, now as concentration of the coccyps are much more they block the coccyps there so it's a extremely tissue specific because it is dual mode of action it not only blocks the the the, the cox two but also the carbonic anhydrase so in uh, the uh, in other tissues where this action is undesirable it acts on the carbonic anhydrase it doesn't act on the coccyps. That is how its side effects can be avoided. So this dual mode of action is extremely important. And because of this tissue specificity, because it it, it is a carbonic acid is abundant in everywhere, everywhere. Very well said. Very, very well said. It was in the, uh, the, any drug which is uh, we are taking, it is taken by the blood. So in part, the RBC, it acts on the car carbonic anhydrase. So it is uh, coming in all parts of the body. So it is an extremely tissue specific. It meant sustain the concentration of the drug in inflamed tissues. And it, it, it protects the organs where the uh, its action is undesirable, like cardiovascular, renal, uh, pulmonary, and the gastrointestinal system. Right. Um, so we come uh, back to the uh, basics of the mechanism of action. Uh, Dr. Mangesh Tivaskar is the right person to ask a, a slightly hard question over here. Um, Dr. Tivaskar, uh, why pulmacoxib is considered as not so hard on heart? Yeah, so uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, good evening, Dr. Ram and Dr. Paul. And of course, thank you, entire joint the team, Allad, uh, Kamal, and everybody who's uh, joined. And of course, Science Integra, I worked with them. Good evening to you. And before I, Bhuvesh, before I answer your question, you know, you have selected a very special day today. Because today was a day when Galileo has for the first time demonstrated the uh, telescope. For the first time this was done. In uh, way back in 1769, I believe, for the first time, the $1 US bill was approved. So it is a pretty important day for all of us, uh, you know, because especially in the astronomy and now in the view of Chandrayaan going early, you know, the, the importance of the telescope is now more re-emphasized and now we have what Hurl uh, space scope which is which is one of the state of art and and it's, it's demonstrating so many uh, I, I would say giants in the space area anyway coming to your question now why you are so uh, you know in love with palmocoxib uh, when it comes to heart so why your heart loves palmocoxib more than any other you know cox2 inhibitors that we have now, let's basically understand how this COX-2 inhibition works. Okay. Now, we all know that there are two different cyclooxygenase enzymes in your body, COX-1 and COX-2. These both enzymes will make prostaglandins. And these are the hormone-like chemicals that cause inflammation, pain, fever. But how many of you are aware that prostaglandins and especially prostacycline is also important for the vessel health and the platelet health? And... When it comes to the inhibition of this COX, you know, what happens is this, that the previous generation COX-2 inhibitors or what we know as, you know, as the non-selective COX-2 inhibitors or to certain extent, even the selective COX-2 inhibitors that we have, 
you know, they had a preferential action on the inflammation. But non-selective COX-2 inhibitors, you know, they were not, if, you know, not protective of the gastric mucosa or they were, you know, probably causing a havoc at the cardiac level. And as Dr. Paul has rightly said, one of the reasons is it's binding or, or I would say, uh, uh, I would say an effect on the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Now, why it is important to understand the specificity of this pulmococcibis is that this is a tissue selective COX-2 inhibitor. Now, what does that mean to us? Now, that means to us that, you know, it binds specifically to only COX-2 and that too specifically in the joints. And we all know, as Dr. Paul again has rightly pointed out, that the distribution of the carbonic anhydrase is tissue specific. It's far more higher in the vasculature. It's far more higher in the heart. And there it doesn't go and bind, you know, so much uh, to the uh, cyclooxygenase inhibitor. But when it comes to the inflammation, where, you know, uh, cyclooxygenase along with the carbonic anhydrase has to play a role, probably it has a very, very joint specific, tissue specific effect. So it has a vascular protective effect. It will also prevent the platelet aggregation, which sometimes is a challenge, especially because of the inhibition of the prostacycline, that is PGI2. And of course, uh, if you remember, and I would definitely say that Dr. Ram uh, would definitely agree and Dr. Paul will also agree, that whenever somebody is going to go for a high altitude of climb, you know, most of the times physicians write down a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, Diamox, to these people. Why that is there is primarily because it has got a prevention effect to stop the capillary leaks, especially in the high altitude challenge. Whenever there is a pressure differences, there are, uh, you know, osmotic changes which are happening in the circulation. You know, the, the carbonic anhydrase has to play a role there. And that is the reason why you will never ever get or unlikely to get that flash pulmonary edema, which sometimes the non-selective uh, COX-2 inhibitors or even sometimes selective COX-2 inhibitors, they tend to have. Suppose somebody is given ibuprofen or diclofenac sodium or even nimesulide. Sometimes, you know, especially those vulnerable class of the patients can go into acute heart failure and decompensation can happen very rapidly. That is unlikely with polmocoxic that we have because it being a so, so, so selective tissue specific COX-2 inhibitor. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, so, so, such a deep explanation you have given. I think everybody is clear with this now. And... Uh, uh, with this, I would like to... Because we need to understand, you know, in heart and all, whenever you talk about an acute joint-related inflammation, well, you don't need any more inhibition in, or COX-2 inhibition or carbonic anhydrase inhibition or action on the heart. You need it specifically working on the joints or the area of the interest. Correct. Very true. Correct. We don't want action on heart and Correct. other uh, soft other, tissues yes. where it is not required, actually. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay, so uh, I would like to invite Dr. Ram Chadda on uh, another uh, burning issue is that like uh, Dr. Ram, we have seen in past that there are so many um, uh, other COX uh, inhibitors which had been available, especially COX-2 inhibitors. Uh, and uh, they were issued warnings regarding the use uh, on uh, like, you know, as they can cause arrhythmias, etc. So uh, what are the main concerns uh, that you think uh, are there with the NSAIs of that kind? Sir, we distinctly remember and ropococcib is one of them that we have had to use and then stop using uh, rather abruptly uh, and uh, a few other coccibs as well where uh, we had issues which restricted the use, which are predominantly beyond the purview of an orthopedic surgeon. Unfortunately, uh, we had no control over their cardiac and GI side effects, which were the two major things which were uh, affecting the use and denied us prolonged use of the same medication. So uh, there was a short-term safety and that short-term safety also was not as ideal as it ought to be. Correct. Hence, we were struggling with the coccyps, which we desire us to use. They're very effective, but no we were unable to use them for that reason. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Dr. Pal, uh, if uh, I may ask you, uh, unlike all other NSAIs, 
pulmocoxib is given just once a day. Uh, can you just elaborate further on this? Absolutely. So we are also on the look for the very convenient dose, which is very compliant for the patient. And surprisingly, your bulmocoxib is a very it is a lo long time it lives in the system. It is well uh, it is well taken in the system. It is remains in the RBC. I've already told it is, a, it is combined with the carbonic anhydrous of the uh, RBC, and it remains in the system for a long time. That is, it is seen. It is almost it remains in one twenty seven hours. Plasma uh, with the without 33, that means almost five days. So it is no need of giving other than one set. So very small dose, two milligram, one set daily dose, it is extremely sufficient to maintain its a therapeutic action uh, on the inflamed tissues. It is a joint specific, it is very inflammation specific, joint specific. And you can there may be an uh, orthopedic uh, uh, specialist, I can I can tell you. So orthopedic specialist is a very uh, good drug for the orthopedic. Right, absolutely. Um, and another question to Dr. Ram, like, uh, uh, like adherence to arthritis or arthritic medications is generally very poor. Uh, what are the main reasons for the non-adherence to these uh, NSAIDs? Well, a couple of things. One, uh, we as patients are very poor patients as regards uh, adherence to therapy. Because we look at only short-term relief of pain and deny that inflammation part. And hence, anything more than once a day, twice a day or thrice a day is often forgotten. That's first. Second, uh, we also have this tendency to get carried away by the number that is written in front of the drug. Like 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams is far more scary than a 2 milligram dose. Although that is not something that is true, but is something which is unfortunately interpreted by the user as more potent or less potent and more side effects or less side effects. The other thing which we also found is that uh, if we counsel the patient about prolonged safety, their adherence to therapy is far superior. And unfortunately, the previous medication and previous coccyps that we used, we could not really do that counseling. We could not give them that confidence of taking it for a prolonged period of time, especially the people suffering with chronic osteoarthritic ailment, which is probably the commonest patient visiting an orthopedic surgeon today with knee, back pain, or any one of those joint pains where this drug is the most efficacious. So it has helped us and will help us in a big way we still don't have as much studies, but I, I believe there is a study of a six-month use without yes. any untoward effect. So I think that's a fairly long period of time to take two milligrams uh, every day for six months and have no real side effects. So I'm, I'm very impressed by that fact. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, just related to this question only for Dr. Paul, like uh, what are kind of long-term safety uh, studies available on this? Yes, uh, there is a, a excellent study which is a randomized, multicentric phase three trial, even a double blinded study, which is a, compared the efficacy of the selecoxib two hundred milligram BD versus two milligram uh, polpol. Uh, it's by Manchul Lee et al. in two thousand seventeen. It is published in Clinical Orthopedic Surgery. This excellent study we have uh, initially is uh, uh, the compared the safety and the efficacy of the both the drugs in six weeks period, which is again extended study of uh, another 18 months. So there is a total 24 months of 362 patients. And uh, I have seen, they, have, they have seen that the 324 patients uh, already completed the, the, the six weeks. And that is all overall, 220 patients overall uh, among 362, they have completed this 24 hours the extended study. And they, they, they compared the efficacy and safety by different parameters, like clinical parameters, like with vital signs, has also some different laboratory tests of uh, considering the different uh, the parameters of judging the different uh, vital uh, functions like cardiovascular functions, like ECG, there are cardinal functions, like the UVA creatinine, creatinine clearance rate, lung, uh, this lung function for the, the, the uh, uh, pulmonary, uh, pulmonary system, as also the GI system also. There are different parameters that they are compared, and they have shown that it is extremely safe 
uh, the polymorphism, uh, this polymorphism uh, this is extremely served in a six weeks period with very mild side effect. Whereas in extended 18 months, 18 weeks uh, study, it shown that it's a extremely safe in cardiovascular, gastro and renal septic. Uh, overall 24 hour mm -hmm. weeks uh, experience shows it is a well tolerated pole vault is well tolerated with mild side effects especially the gastrointestinal side effect and very uh, little uh, very uh, few cases they showed some uh, pedal edema uh, in first two weeks which is gradually it is uh, it is removed it is uh, no, no extra no extra uh, precaution or any rescue medicine is required during this period so it is extremely safe uh, in uh, this uh, uh, overall 24 week study Right, sir. Sir, um, is there any uh, superiority of pulmocoxib over silicoxib? Absolutely, absolutely. And this uh, Manchul Lee, they have shown there is absolutely pole uh, vault is extremely superior because in the, I mean, they, they have uh, they have shown there is a there is a WOMAC uh, parameters. When Western uh, uh, McMaster, uh, Ontario and McMaster University score, they have shown this extremely sensitive score. They have shown that they have uh, the pain relief is extremely uh, quicker a quicker onset of action with pole vault in three weeks period it is a, it is extremely weaker whereas there is no statistical significant uh, pain relief in silicoxib versus some placebo in three weeks right. period so with pole, uh, pole vault the pain relief starts from three weeks onwards and in the six weeks in if we compare the pain relief and the and the stiffness they have significant you know, symptomatic relief um, which is extremely statistically significant in comparison with the placebo with pole vault in comparison with the serecoxib not only that at six weeks period there is a, there is a, uh, in pole vault there is 77.7 percent .7 patients showed the sig satisfactory symptomatic relief in, in, in respect to pain relief and the stiffness uh, 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 amelioration the stiffness of the knee joint osteoarthrosis in comparison with the only the 58 .7 nine percent that is uh, almost uh, the uh, 20 percent less in silicoxib so in in that study they have, uh, they have clearly shown that the pole vault is extremely superior uh, in action and in our clinical study in six weeks to extended 24 hour weeks period in comparison with the silicoxib 200 milligram bd right right that, that's very interesting actually uh dr mangesh uh Tevaska, uh if i may ask you uh, like, you know, uh, there are many cardiac patients who may be taking aspirin or low-dose aspirin daily. Uh, is it okay to take polmocoxib along with? Yeah, and in fact, good question, Dr. Bhupesh. And uh, I can tell you that uh, in a majority of the times, uh, if, if you ask a physician like me, probably, and if he or she comes to know that uh, probably somebody is on with uh, uh, NSAIDs and especially the COX-2 inhibitors, we really get scared basically because, you know, if you really look at and compare the effects of the non-selective versus this selective versus even the specific, the specifically tissue selective COX-2 inhibitors, we have to realize the difference, how they act, honestly speaking. Now, if we all know that, you know, it's an arachidonic acid guided pathway where probably, you know, COX-1 have effects on two platelets, you know, COX-1 actually, what it does is this, that it, it triggers the thromboxin A2, it protects the thromboxin A2 uh, from getting triggered. And that will definitely help in preventing the thrombosis. As far as the COX-1 effect, again, on the gastric mucosa is concerned, you know, usually the effect is usually through the prostaglandin E2 and I2 that we know, that it offers a gastric protection through a COX-1 release. And if you talk about the COX-2 in the endothelial cell specifically, which is acting through the prostacycline, that is prostacycline or a prostaglandin I2, its effect is vasodilatation and again, reduction in the platelet aggregation. Okay. Now, whenever uh, there are these drugs like, you know, thromboxine A2 inhibitors, like, you know, low-dose aspirin, or maybe probably, you know, the patient is on with the dual antiplatelet agents. Correct. You know, your worry about the excessive GI bleeds, especially, can really be really be challenged, right. and especially during this period, probably, you know, these patients they become vulnerable. So, the specialty of polmocoxib here is this that being just so specific to the joint COX two, you know, it does not have any effect as far as the COX one in the platelets, COX one in the gastric mucosa, even COX one in the endothelial cells. So you can easily and safely ask patient to continue with low-dose aspirin. Or I would give, go a step ahead and say that even with the DAPs, of course, the caution is always given to the patient. But, you know, it's much safer. And more importantly, we don't understand this much 
but unfortunately that will also help you in reducing down the misuse or overuse of proton pump inhibitors which is so rampant in the yeah. practice and especially orthopedicians and most of the people those who are prescribing you know these kind of nsaids they would definitely love their patients to be protected gi wise as well isn't it right. now if you have got a coxib which is gi friendly which does not cause erosions along with that it it works very specifically to the target i would love it isn't it because sure. over use of ppr will not only you know uh, will hamper the overall oral mucosa regrowth the pathogenesis but it have an effect on the gut microbiota it really yeah. pushes gut microbiota in a bad way so your metabolic milieu goes for a toss and Very if you are using it you know injudiciously especially diabetic who is hypertense who has ischemic heart disease has a low ejection fraction already has gastro gastric autonomic neuropathy now you will require the drugs which will be more specific in the action correct this is a greatest advantage of permocoxib or other oxib but then if we consider uh, all other coxibs so all coxib must be having same mechanism so are they actually same or there is some difference no, between permocoxib and others yes there are differences between the permocoxib and others and i have tried to tell you that that primarily it does not cause any effect as far as the platelet function is concerned which because other coxibs are so non selective or more towards you know selective but they do not have a specific protective effect as far as the thromboxane 2 is concerned or the cox2 which has got a vasodilatory effect is concerned that is not affected by permocoxib so are there any cardiovascular warnings or any other serious gi side effects with permocoxib or there is none no, honestly speaking in comparison to the other coxibs i can easily say that you know palmocoxib is a much much safer choice of course we need to educate our patients we need to tell them what are the warning things and they should be watchful for right. and and if at all there are any say anything like this they should report but the right. chances are unlikely or less likely in comparison to other non selective coxibs or the broad spectrum nsaids i would say but uh, dr mangesh like the way you explained that uh, because of its specific action on carbonic anhydrase where it is getting uh, like sponged out by other uh, sensitive organs uh, does this uh, interaction with carbonic anhydrase uh, it actually affects the physiological function of uh, uh, other organs other organs also and in fact it, it has got a beneficial effect on the rbc as dr paul has already said that you know they have got a wonderful wonderful ability to stick to this uh, rbcs for a long long time and also they do have got an effect as far as the platelet aggregation is concerned correct and what about cardio renal safety uh, renal safety is uh, renal safety is still you know it's not completely ruled out to be very honest uh -huh. to you you should be very careful as any other nsaid you would be right. because renal safety is an you know, absolutely different ball game but i can tell you that uh, you can say that in in up to around stage 3 and i would say stage 3b nephropathy you may have got a choice and if the pain relief is a major factor there you know you don't have anything except probably paracetamol there or tramadol there which is there or probably you know you have got uh, this uh, morphine derivatives there here i have a drug which can be on prescribed up to stage 3 nephropathy where wow. egfr is around around i i would say 60 Uh, the same question to Dr. Ram Chadda in his practice, like, uh, what what do you feel about the renal safety of this product? Well, it's extremely important. I mean, as I look at it, I uh, look for renal safety in two major prescriptions that I use every day. One is the choice of my pain medication, and the second is the choice of my anti osteoporotic medication. And believe right. me, out of twenty patients a day that I see, maybe ten of them. need both these medicines together okay. hence for me uh, something which can be used with an egfr of 60 is a big plus point in my practice something that can be used besides paracetamol and tramadol and morphine in renal challenge is a big plus to my practice and when it belongs to the coxib group the amount of relief that they get and i know that 
I think it's it's a huge value addition to our practice. So okay, I am totally convinced that it works well. Right, right. And what are the risk mitigation strategies you take for uh, high risk patients? As In far as NSAIDs, yeah, when you give NSAIDs. Well, I used to, I use, I will be very frank, the moment I used to have anything, I mean, EGFR 60, which has been told today, I mean, it's, it's a revelation for me. I, yeah. I stop with my NSAIDs at a, at a much, much safer level than that. Oh, is and, it? I tend, and I tend to upgrade on my paracetamol doses. So that's the biggest risk mitigation that I indulge in. So that's how I work. That's that's very good. In fact, it's all a very practical and a useful information we are getting from uh, the eminent panelists. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, there are certain questions which are coming from the viewers uh, who are uh, currently in the show. Uh, there is uh, one query from uh, Professor Dr. Venkatachalam uh, Krishnamurti from Trichy in Tamil Nadu. Uh, he says that carbonic anhydrous therefore has an essential role in facilitating transport of carbon dioxide, bicarbonate, hydrogen Absolutely. ions across falling cell membranes for a variety of processes, Correct. erythrocytes, uh, where carbonic anhydrous contribute to carriage of carbon dioxide transport from the tissue to the lungs, stomach, pancreas, so many other places, brain, etc. And uh, will it affect that? So, um, no, no, so the answer so, clearly is, so, yeah, Dr. Mangesh, take your yeah, so the answer clearly is no, it will not. And as you are rightly pointed out, it's uh, it, that's exactly what the role of carbonic anhydrase is there, you know, and and more towards the tissue, uh, I would say, gaseous exchange, maintaining the acid base balance, maintenance of the fluid balance, all these things, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor it has a role. Now, being so specific in the joint effect where, you know, COX-2 is much, much, much higher and the carbonic anhydrase is much lower role to play as far as the inflammation is concerned. And if you really have an effect of, uh, you know, that, you know, in opposite to exactly what happens to heart, I believe Pulmocox is the safer choice. And that is the reason why we say that yeah. it will not cause or it's unlikely to cause flash pulmonary edema or the trigger of even I would say, go ahead and say the trigger of probably uh, an episode of bronchial asthma or COPDs where you are really worried about, you know, these patients and especially, you know, drugs like uh, probably diclofenac, you would not like to give them aspirin even to a certain extent or ibuprofen to a certain extent, especially in the patient, those who are allergic asthmas, COPDs, you would love to be careful with them. I think this drug would definitely solve a lot of headaches of the prescribing practitioners as far as these conditions are concerned. And, and just correct me okay. if I'm wrong. Can, uh, like... can, yeah. can I comment on this? Can I sure, comment? Sure, please, please. please. Uh, this is a very good question. But basically, there's an answer of this, whether this drug can block the physiological action of carbonic anhydrase or not. So basically, this is the question. So basically, carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme which acting as a, which, which produces the buffer system in our body. So that's acid-based balance. And Dr. Sub uh, is asking whether it, it, it affects this, uh, this buffer system in the lung or not. Basically, mm -hmm. by, this, basically, there are several other drugs like acetazolamide. Acetazolamide that selectively blocks the carbonic anhydrase. But this, uh, this, uh, this polma coxipol body this doesn't uh, so that type of drug which completely blocks the carbonic anhydrase. So that then uh, as uh, the, the, it, it is special affinity to act on a special moiety that is aryl sulfonamide moiety, which is common with coxip uh, that is the uh, the coxip two enzyme as also the this carbonic anhydrase. So that is how it it blocks the carbonic anhydrase in some uh, some areas where it is abundant as it, in this system in the lung uh, the different uh, systems so that is how it works it, that doesn't indicate it completely blocks the action of carbonic anhydrase in those areas so that is the there are several other drugs like carbonic anhydrase that is a, that is acetazolamide acetazolamide that can block the carbonic anhydrase that is how it, it is it is useful for the some uh, some carbonic anhydrase induced diseases like the glaucoma, the macular edema, epilepsy, like that. But it is not uh, the pole body. So it, that is how it is safe. It cannot block the uh, the physiological action of carbonic yeah, so anhydrase. So that's what exactly I was trying to say, that you know, where the tissues yeah. where you have got a large amount of carbonic anhydrase, yeah. it will not cause much of the effect. And especially in the tissue and, where you have a small amount of carbonic anhydrase. Maybe and probably, Dr. You know, uh, if I'm if I'm not wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, like uh, uh, one is the physiological 
uh, action where all this being produced continuously and other is the induced form like cox in, is just induced in certain organs where inflammation is there inflammation related induction yes yes so probably that again equation will set in and you would not like to give uh, polmococcip to non arthritic patients or non uh, uh, inflamed joint patients so probably then the question of uh, normal physiological inhibition uh, will not be uh, much so there is another question, very interesting one, from Dr. Dayanand Jangir from Jodhpur, Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. uh, he's asking, what is the lethal dose of polmococcyp 2 milligram capsule? And <laughs> is polmococcyp 2 milligram capsule has tachyphylactic effect? Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the drug interactions are concerned, really, yes, you need to be very careful when the polmococcyp is prescribed along with ketoconazole, you know, ACE uh, or ARBs. Diuretics, you should be careful. Lithium, methotrexate, um, the drugs like uh, uh, warfarin, cyclosporins, or tacrolimus, this is modulating agent, or even with corticosteroids, you should be careful. As far as the lethal dose is concerned, I am not really truly aware about it. It's a good question. Probably I would also love to read about it. But uh, I think this is a fairly safe drug in, in uh, because. Whatever I understand about the pharmacology and probably Bupesh, you would be able to tell us in a better way that uh, yeah. uh, maybe probably you know, the approved human dose is at least 10 times lower than the acceptable pharmacological doses. Uh, in fact, in animals, this yes. dose is found to be 100 times uh, more than the yes. uh, human dose. It so is lethal 100 dose. time difference. Yes. So, so this is this particular dose would be very, very safe that way. Yeah, so be careful only with while co prescribing with these drugs as yeah. an engine. Correct. And especially with ACRBs, ketoconazole, corticosteroids, methotrexate, especially, comarin sure. derivatives. You should be careful. Diuretics and that will loop diuretics. You should be a little careful about you know, prescribing this. Drug. That's very, very true. Okay, so uh, just moving on to a few more questions. Like uh, there is. Uh, Dr. Jagdish uh, Gehlot, again from Jodhpur. What is maximum dose in a day a doctor can prescribe to patients to relieve chronic pain? So two milligram is the one which is recommended and it is to be given regularly uh, for a, a continuous period of time before we actually see the perceptible uh, change in the arthritic condition. Um, Dr. Kumara Mani Jena from Katak, Orissa. What is side effect? profile of the molecule, any contraindications? Yes. Uh, Dr. Mangesh, I think you have just discussed yes, that. A good, so... good question about it, especially I would like to specifically mention about the contraindications. Number one is, as usual, a very standard answer. You know, if you're appearing for an examination, and if you don't know the answer, Dr. Paul will be seeing so many of the students answering this, that allergic yeah. to allergy to the drug. So the same answer, if somebody is hypersensitive to palmococcid, you should not be giving. Absolutely. You should be extremely careful about hepatic impairment patients. Always remember, and especially child's class two ahead, you should never be given. Renal impairments and acute renal shutdowns, acute kidney injuries, or the EGFR below 60, you should be careful. So stage three nephropathy and below, you should be careful about it. Somebody has a history of an acute pulmonary uh, or acute GI bleed or a peptic ulcer bleed, you should be very careful. Pregnancy is an absolute contraindication. It is not indicated in pregnancy at all. In nursing mothers also, you should not be prescribing this. And especially in the elderly, who are highly likely to have the you know renal compromise or very unstable cardiac function, I would not say it's a contraindication, but there you would love your you uh, your patients to be careful. And I want the prescribing physicians or the or the doctors should be also very very watchful in this kind of a vulnerable class, and 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 special precautions to be especially taking as as Bukesh you asked about the dose of aspirin, you should be careful. Some people, they have, uh, you know, some of my patients in whom I have used in my whatever limited experience that this patient, some people initially complained of little greasiness and drowsiness, especially. So they should be careful while driving. That is very important. And lastly, it is extremely important to avoid alcohol, so which, which are going to make a lot of patients unhappy about it. But a very, very strong warning has to be given to avoid simultaneous alcohol when you are on That's the drugs true. like palmocoxin. Right. Um, uh, Dr. Ram, there is a very interesting question coming from Dr. Debashish Majumdar from Midnapur, West Bengal. He's asking, 
is osteoarthritis a degenerative disorder or an inflammatory disorder? How can you justify its use in osteoarthritis long term? So it is a degenerative disorder, but it has acute remission exacerbations, not as active as with acute inflammatory disorders like rheumatoid arthritis. But there are patients who go through good phases and bad phases. And whenever they're going through those bad phases, they do need medical support. So one is, yes, the patient accepting. But the fact is that pain cannot be lived with forever. And hence, we have to use it both as far as its analgesic and anti-inflammatory actions. Uh, can, can I can I, uh, can I add to it? Yes, can please. I add please. Sure. Uh, yes. Basically, there are two terms. One is osteoarthrosis. Another is osteoarthritis. Okay. Basically, it is deliberately given that the question is whether the hand comes first or the egg comes first. That is the this answer is the same. Basically, it's osteoarthrosis. So osis is means when the once this term is added with the word, this is a degenerative disease. Now, which has come first? Osteoarthrosis. What is the what is which from which structure the disease comes? It is basically the articular cartilage. Articular cartilage is divided. It has no blood supply. It has no nerve supply. It has no lymphatic supply. So how the inflammation comes? So basically, it is a degenerative disorder. Once the articular cartilage is damaged, then the, once that uh, that degrading product that invites inflammation. That is, the inflammation comes later on. So once there is osteoarthrosis, basically it is a degenerative disorder. When the inflammation sets in, patient becomes symptomatic and that has goes to the clinician. So that is uh, that is the basic uh, theory. Wonderful, wonderful. That's so nice. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, I I thought like now this is a very very good discussion we had of late. Like you know, in so many uh, seminars we were conducting, but a very very practical. Discussion I, I think one here. point we need to insist for all our listeners Please. and are this. this may not be a drug for an acute effect. Correct, correct. For it's an it's a chronic pain, disease. Uh, you, if you are looking at this drug to reduce down the acute pain, probably you are making a wrong choice. But you want to have the pain-free maintenance phase, you know, probably this, this drug can be wonderful, wonderful opportunity. So be very, very careful. Use it, have it uh, feel and then probably you will realize that you have a far better tool than what we thought about. Right. So, <laughs> no, I think it's um, uh, so engrossing. I don't want to leave the session to, and I'm absorbing just like Polmokox, I'm absorbing all the information from you guys. You know. Uh, so in fact, I was, but, I was so impressed by Dr. Paul, you know, I was, when he was talking about carbonic anhydrase, I was wondering, am I, am I a physician or is he a physician you know, who should be supposed to know about it? You know, I was really, really impressed uh, with Dr. Paul that uh, the way you explained that carbonic anhydrase uh, it was really, really lucid and very simple. Excellent. Okay, with this, uh, I would like to uh, invite Lad Mahajani uh, to give a uh, vote of thanks. Uh, it has been a wonderful discussion. Uh, I, I'm, I'm greatly thankful to Dr. Ram Chadda, Dr. Mangesh Tivaskar and Dr. Paul. Uh, for the wonderful, uh, you know, insights, uh, you know, these are pearls of wisdom probably which we will carry with us. And I'm sure all those esteemed audience who has joined us uh, to learn about uh, management of chronic inflammation and pain would definitely carry it uh, with them. Uh, so uh, I sincerely thank you, sir, for the esteemed panelists, each one of you for taking the time out of the busy schedule. And also all the esteemed guests who have attended this session, a sincere thank you on behalf of Juventus. We must also thank Science Integra uh, for carrying out this uh, program seamlessly well, uh, and we are obliged. Thank you so much. Now, uh, before we before we depart, uh, one liner for Pulmocoxib from each of the panelists. So, to begin with, Dr. Ram. Well, just because I have got, got the chance to speak first, I'll use something that I use very very often: is better safe than sorry. So, it's no. a drug where if you don't use it, you'll be sorry. And believe me, it's safe. Great. Very nice. Uh, Dr. Paul, please. Yes. <clears throat> As I, I actually, I looked at this drug, the osteoarthritis, I've already sh sh explained, osteoarthrosis is converts to osteoarthritis is the inflammation. Osteoarthrosis plus inflammation is equal to arthritis. So that is the, the, the drug. We have to choose one drug, which is extremely helpful for inflammation. 
reduction of the inflammation as also symptomatic. So in this oh. way, it's a convenient, once daily dose, highly potent osteo anti-inflammatory analgesic is a polymorphoxin, which is extremely safe also. Lovely. Very, very good. Uh, Dr. Pivaska, please. Thank you, Bupesh. And before I say my last line, I would definitely would like to put uh, my appreciations to you because the success of the program depends on the moderation. And you moderated it very well. And of course, a huge thanks to all our audience. Those who have shared their time. Sure. You know, today is a practicing day. And lot not, not many of us are lazy. Like, you know, lot, not many of them are lazy like us, you know, doing this kind of webinars. They love still practicing and out of that, they have taken out their time. So that really imparts the love. And that, that again, insists and makes me believe the fan following of Dr. Ram Chadda and Dr. Paul. You know, this is wonderful. So thanks, everybody, those who have joined. And my line would be that here is a drug probably, uh, uh, it may be an orthopedician's dream, but uh, it would not be, a, you know, odd to say that it has solved a lot of physician and cardiologist nightmares. So, you know, especially... When it comes to pain, we do not probably, we are very insensitive as far as the management of the chronic pain. We need to get sensitized to it and address this challenge because that is one limiting factor which is sometimes, you know, makes the patients vulnerable and okay. also they stop believing in doctors. Here is a drug probably which is fairly safe, which can be fairly well used. Of course, the necessary precaution needs to be taken, but of course, you know, it's it's a drug which may probably change the way we manage our chronic painful conditions. So nice. Thank you so much, Dr. Tibaskar and Dr. Pal and Dr. Chadda uh, for your wonderful contribution to today's uh, webinar. Thank you very much and have a very nice evening. Thank you. Okay. And Allah is looking as handsome as he should be. You know, so <laughs> nice. Bye-bye. Right. Good night, Thank everybody. You, and take Bye. care of yourself. Bye. It was a pleasure joining you. And Dr. Paul, it was an honor to know you. Thank you very okay, much. And of course, Ram, nice sir, sir. Thank good you, sir. evening and a salute to you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you yes, so bye. much. Bye. 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 Bye, bye. Aditi. Bye. It was lovely seeing you after a long time on the platform. Definitely. Bye-bye. Nice, nice meeting. We have enjoyed a lot. Thank you. Thank bye. you, sir. Thank you.